I can start by saying I spent my early years in Beverly, Southside. Uh, my vocation started with uh, Sister Agnes Clare, who sent four of us down to Notre Dame, Indiana. And uh, she sort of planted the seed. And I think of Sister Agnes Clare so, so often because really, had it not been for Sister Agnes Clare, I could have been a very wealthy real estate developer instead. Ordained in 1973 and was uh, assigned to a very large parish, what we used to call a factory parish, where everything happened, large school, weddings, baptisms, funerals. It was a great start to the priesthood. But a couple of years after that, the priests of the diocese put me up as a candidate for the priest personnel board. And after two years of ordination, I was appointed, to, elected to the priest personnel board. It sort of started a little bit of my time in administration. I sat across from the chancellor of the diocese and uh, the two of us got along. And so in 1980, Cardinal Cody appointed me to be uh, assistant chancellor and secretary for clergy personnel. And Cardinal Bernadine came uh, in 1982. I took the Cardinal up at the airport we had a long, wonderful ride and relationship for 14 and a half years. And I was in the hearse as we drove to Mount Carmel after he died. Uh, through those years, the Cardinal appointed me the vice chancellor, master of ceremonies. He appointed me to be his representative on the priest personnel board and to assist him in everyday activity. I basically was his driver around the city. So I really, was really next to him and saw the people behind him. Uh, I was behind him and, and saw people, and sometimes I spent time with people that he might not have been able to spend a lot of time with, set the appointments, set a schedule, and uh, uh, it was a, a tremendous experience. Along about, oh, 1985, rather than being uh, vice chancellor, I was named executive assistant to the Cardinal, continued my work in priest personnel, and uh, handled most of those things. We had a vicar for priests, fortunately. Vicar for Priest. The Vicar for Priest handled all of the sticky things we have now. And in 1991, the Cardinal had a, a terrible conflict because one of the priest's uh, situations, it was made public and the Cardinal hit it straight on and he decided to have a commission uh, and the commission put a protocol together that he later brought to Notre Dame, Indiana and told the bishops that they should mandate each diocese to have it. Cardinal Law fought him and said, diocese can't be mandated by the the uh, bishops conference only Rome, but that was sort of the, the cornerstone of the whole thing. And then, of course, uh, Cardinal Bernadine died in 1996. But four years before he died, he appointed me. Well, he didn't appoint me, but he uh, promote put put my name forward to be the president of the Catholic Church Extension Society. Mary Dempsey was on that board. We had 12 members, six bishops from around the country, and. We had six really wonderful people from this local area, local church, who filled in the bill for some of the committees. And it was a great work. I visited every uh, state in the union and every territory except for Maine. It never got to Maine and still haven't. But I uh, found it rewarding to see the church at the ground level and to see religious women and extension provided funds for property and then building a church and providing seminarian education, religious education, and also uh, Newman work. So it was a, a wonderful experience for eight years. The Cardinal Bernadine died about uh, 1996. I remained in that and continued to live at the Cardinal's residence and uh, did that work. And then in 1991, I left Catholic Extension and I, I can say, as John Brennan could say, that he's here because of his father and mother. Uh, Ed Brennan was the person who really got me involved at DePaul. It was in 1998 or 1999 that Ed and Lois came to the Fenwick graduation and caught me afterwards and said, Ed said, I'd like to sit down and talk with you. And they talked with me and Ed asked me to be a member of the board of trustees of DePaul. And that's where I joined. Uh, when I left Extension, I got a call from Jack Minogue. And he said, we'd like to talk to you. And he said, we'd like to have you come and work at DePaul. And prior to that, Jack Egan died. And he said, we'd like to have you come here. I said, Jack, I am not Jack Egan. Uh, I could never take his place. No one could take his place. We know that. We know that. We want you to come. So I sat down with Meister, McHugh, and Minogue and talked about 
what I'd be doing. And basically, they said, be Ken Vilo. I said, what does that mean to you? Be Ken Vilo. Represent the university with Catholic business, Catholic government, uh, the Catholic archdiocese. And I think about that time we came through with Cordia Ecclesia, which was a document from the Rome about the church and universities and doctrinal uh, orthodoxy. And so there's a, a chasm between universities and dioceses, similar to what occurred between uh, dioceses and universities when Obama received the Leitari Award from uh, the uh, University of Notre Dame. I saw that same tension. So I think that's one of the reasons why Ed had asked me to join in, in consultation with Jack and the Vincentian Fathers. I'm not a Vincentian priest. I love working with the Vincentian priests and gotten to know all of them through the years and, and admire what they've done and in the spirit of, of Vincent. And so these last years, uh, I've been working in what's known as Catholic collaboration, but I think it was a broad title Jack gave me to sort of do the things I'm doing. It was shortly after I arrived here that Jim O'Connor, who had been chairman of Commonwealth Edison, called me. So we have a problem at, at Big Shoulders. We have an executive director who's going on maternity leave. Will you come and help us? He said, will you come and help us full time? I said, well, Jim, I just got new furniture at DePaul. I can't come. But I will help as much as possible during this maternity leave. So I went there. I worked with the staff for a number of months. The executive director came back. She really wanted to be with her child. And shortly after that, Josh Hale was uh, brought out to the picture. And so uh, I had, they gave me the title of non-executive president when I worked with the executive director. And then when Josh came, I held that, but I continued on and I said, I really belong with Jim O'Connor and John Canning as co-chair. So we have a team of four. I work with them. That's my part-time job. Sometimes I feel guilty because DePaul pays me, but I'm in that. Jack Minogue always felt as though that enhanced what I was doing. And I did meet so many other people. Big Shoulder started in 1986 at the Cardinals dining room table and he got individuals to go out and get money for endowment for the Catholic schools because it was a $6 million deficit. One of the people who went to see, uh, I drove him uh, to Dearborn Street, uh, was uh, Phil Corboy, Mary's husband. Uh, and I remember him coming down and said, well, I think we're going to get something. Prior After that, I had talked to Phil himself and Mary, and Phil told me that the Cardinal said uh, to him that he wanted him, him to make a very generous donation, which at that time was an extremely generous donation. And uh, Phil said, how do you say no to a Cardinal? And the Cardinal said, you don't. And so that was the beginning of a long and wonderful relationship with Phil and Mary and so many other business leaders, government leaders. And so I, I enjoyed the city. I never was named a pastor, but I feel as though the desk here at DePaul and what I do is trying to be pastor to a lot of different people and serving the church. Uh, Dan and Sasha and John have spoken with me as I've spoken with other people. And through the years, I haven't been involved with a lot of the nitty gritty, or a lot of the... Uh, efforts going on, but I've sort of concentrated on some major efforts and work with Lester Crown, work with Dennis, we received a big donation there and continue to work with that family, hopefully some significant. Alan Bully, um, the uh, Keeleys, uh, because of, I think because of my work at Big Shoulders, John Canning and the Maza Foundation have come here to support our students in the Big Shoulders program. And now we're working with Carol Burnick, who's gotten involved here. Carol's a tremendous leader. Uh, in the city, and she's a wonderful marketing person. Uh, so I always have a difficult time when I sit down, sat down with Minogue or Oschneider or uh, Gabe, kind of talking about what I've done because so much of it is relationship. But I believe that's really what it is all about. It's relationship. It's relationship with the university to the broader community. And uh, I, in the course of that, I've been on the board of Lurie after Jack Minogue left. They put me on the board of Lurie uh, Children's, pre, uh, preceding Children's Hospital. And I work at uh, Shirley Ryan Ability Lab as chaplain and Old St. Pat's insofar as I'm able to keep up those pastoral duties. Uh, I was on the board at St. Mary's College for a number of years at Trinity High School. So just spreading myself in the community of Chicago. I love Chicago and DePaul is Chicago and Chicago is DePaul. Uh, so I hope to continue in whatever way I can and whenever asked and hope to continue to help you in this great effort. Uh, the students of DePaul are 
so diverse and it's wonderful to see all because that's what it really is about these days especially with all that we're going through and seeing uh, the strife that we've had in the city uh, more people that understand diversity and also our relationship to the jewish community i feel strongly about our brothers and sisters in the jewish community and try to be as present to them as possible at different times especially making a few calls these days because it's a very stressful time seeing what's happening on the evening news or in Brian Williams and what's happening in, in Jerusalem and, and uh, the, we're just the terrible strife that you see amongst the children and families and buildings going down. So all those different efforts uh, I enjoy. I'm probably at a retirement age, but I don't think I'll retire. I find myself through this pandemic saying it all the more. I said, I, I had a hard time some mornings when all of a sudden a lot of the pastoral work was taken, hospitals, funerals, weddings became smaller, and saw myself in a different time zone. And so I determined then, as I did before, that I'm just going to keep on going. The Italians have an expression, stay on your feet. And that's just what I'm going to do, stay on my feet. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you, and I'll be most willing to answer questions. What I didn't say was at Big Shoulders, we're raising now about $22, $23 million. At Extension, we raised $22, $23 million a year. When I put that in perspective, that's about $480,000 a week with a two-week vacation. So it's a lot of money, but Extension was national and Big Shoulders is the city. But I think DePaul really has an expansive network to continue working on, working with, with Rich Good in the whole area of wills and estates. I think that's a very important aspect. You know, I've always told people in development, where there's a will, there's a relative. But hopefully, where there's a will, DePaul will be. So thank you for your time.